jigsaw the puzzle. When it came to the music, I found myself all of a sudden recognizing that the idea of elaborately orchestrating ambient jams seemed to be an angle that I could get behind. It was a creative avenue that seemed interesting. And there's this experience that I've had with ambient music, music without form or overt lyrical content. For as far back as I can actually remember, that experience is by listening to it, by listening close, you can start to hear things in it that may or may not even be in there. Voices in the fan like a distant symphony exists in this ambient music the more you listen to it. Melodies, rhythms, like cloud watching. So what became really enticing to me was to listen to this fourth ambient jam and try to extrapolate those sorts of things, bring them out more, either with a keyboard or guitar or voice. Sort of listen to these things that are hidden in the ambient music and try to make them intentional. So then the chaos ends up dictating the arrangements. And this I found super interesting. So it goes without saying that during this period, all my artists and musician friends, everyone was going through this. Everyone was trying to find a solution. And of course, a lot of us felt very isolated, socially, artistically. So I contacted a few of my friends and I said, hey, I've got this ambient music that I hear definite melodies in. If you could listen to it and then try to bring them out and make them sound more intentional, it could be really fun. It's like adding a dark outline to an existing pencil sketch. Let's add a keyboard to it or a violin or voice or drums. Anything that we can extrapolate what's already there and make it sound very definite. Now my original idea was to put it out immediately. So it essentially would become just another guitar ambient jam. If you follow me on social media, you may remember that last year I had said, hey, I've written this thing, it's called The Puzzle, and I'm going to put it out next week. But the more I worked on it, the more I started to recognize it had the potential to be a little more. So out of interest, I contacted my friend Travis Smith, who's done art with me for many years, to see if he'd be interested in just whipping up some images. Maybe something in Photoshop that acts as a visual equivalent to an ambient jam. He agreed and I decided to send him the music so he would have something to reference while he was creating. And by doing that, he created around a dozen digital images that were really cool. They were abstract, sort of modern art, but they were in line with the music. And as is typical for me, the ideas started to snowball and I began to see his images as a visual counterpart to something bigger. So I then purchased a piece of video editing software, put all his images in, added the ambient jam as the soundtrack and sort of made myself a visual counterpart that I could loop while I was working on this music. So from his 15 or so images, I made what maybe is not to be considered a film, but more like a visualizer that I would play on my screen while I was working. And just over time, it was almost like a narrative began to appear. And I told Travis, okay, in your images, when I zoom in on it, this thing, that was entirely unintentional on Travis's part. Looks like, oh, it looks like a bug there. It looks like a shark or it looks like a person or like cloud watching. And then suddenly I realized I had a theme. Chaos dictates the narrative. Now, when I had made this visualizer, I had done a bunch of hyper zooms on Travis's art in order to find these kind of what I considered to be hidden things. Then I started seeing the art a little different. I thought, well, they look like landscapes to me. It'd be really cool if I could have somebody animate stick people on top of them. And the juxtaposition of these real simple stick people drawings on top of these zoomed in pieces of artwork made the art look like landscapes, like really elaborate kind of terrain. And that, again, started to snowball. And I started to see each one of these landscapes as an individual world. I thought it would be cool to start creating this environment, which included different characters, different worlds, and all the artists that I had been in touch with could act as different aspects of that. So I then sent out a bunch of emails and asked a bunch of artists I knew if they wanted to be involved. Originally, I sent it out to just a few people, 
people whom I knew could get behind this theme, and people who weren't either too busy or too shattered. It was meant to be a release, fun, creative, abstract. So it was just a handful of people at first. But the instructions were very simple. Do whatever you want and send it back to me. Just ask yourself before you record anything, do you hear it in there? Is it necessary? Then send me your ideas. I would mix it, I would interpret it, and then I would send it back out to everybody. And this started happening daily. And although the fundamental musical ideas were already there, it became almost like a slow motion jam. And even though at this point it hadn't defined itself yet, it was starting to take shape. 